Welcome to another episode of Eric Complains About Everything. Now, calm down, hold up, all of you Brave fanboys, before you start writing in the comments. I actually still like Brave, and I still think it is one of the best web browsers out there. I even made a browser tier list recently, and I ranked Brave as one of the best out there. So this definitely isn't meant to be a video bashing on Brave, because I think that Brave is one of the best browsers for normal people. Because Brave blocks ads and trackers out of the box, and it has a lot of sensible privacy respecting settings enabled by default. And you don't get Google as your default search engine like you do with something like Firefox. So for a normie that doesn't want to spend the afternoon configuring Firefox to make it usable, I still recommend Brave for them. But at the same time, I have stopped using Brave. I think it's been about since the start of the year, so about six months now that I haven't used Brave. And prior to that, I had been using Brave for almost two years as my full-time web browser. So please don't just dismiss this as the rantings of a Brave hater, because hating on Brave is trendy now for whatever reason. But in this video, I just wanted to go over why I stopped using Brave, talk about a lot of the little annoyances that I had using this browser, and talk about what I switched to instead. And finally, whether you should switch from Brave, or if you should just keep using it. So that's what I'm going to try to answer in this video. Now, we can't talk about Brave without talking about the crypto aspect of it. So first things first, let's just talk about Brave Rewards. Now, for some reason, if you stumbled on this video without knowing what Brave Rewards are, well, let's just open up the page right here. And so Brave by default blocks all ads and trackers across the web, so you're not going to see any ads. But you can kind of opt in to advertisements with Brave Rewards. So with Brave Rewards, you can configure it to send you up to 10 ads per hour. And they will send these ads as a desktop notification. And every time you view one of these ads, you will get a little bit of their cryptocurrency called BAT as compensation. And you can do with this cryptocurrency whatever you want. You can withdraw it from Brave. You can also share it with other creators. Because you can sign up as a creator and have people tip you in BAT if they like your YouTube video or your website or something like that. So basically with Brave, you get free money just for browsing the web. And if you'd like, you can share it with other people. So as for the idea, I actually think that is pretty good. It's just the implementation that I really have a problem with. So first off, a lot of people probably come to Brave because they want better privacy. So using something like Google Chrome, of course, Google will collect all of your personal info. Once you use Google Chrome, they can track all of your history and browsing data, and a lot of people don't like that. And Brave is very privacy respecting by default. But one of the issues with this Brave Rewards is if you actually want to get any of this cryptocurrency that you actually earn, well, you can see here, if I start using Brave Rewards, select a country here, and just set something like this, let's say 10 ads per hour. Well, you're not actually able to start earning cryptocurrency for yourself, until you connect an account with one of these providers, either Uphold or Gemini. And these are two cryptocurrency exchanges, but the problem here is that they are KYC exchanges, which stands for Know Your Customer. Now you've probably experienced this before if you signed up for one of these major crypto exchanges, but most of the big ones, they require you to submit all kinds of personal data about yourself. They require you to upload a government ID, a whole bunch of personal information about you so that it is directly connected to you. And for a lot of people, one of the biggest benefits of using cryptocurrency is that you can become completely private and anonymous, and people and governments can't track your assets all over the place. I mean, I understand that cryptocurrency these days, when people think about it, most people think about, oh, it's just that thing where people try to get rich by buying some random coin and hoping it goes to the moon. But at least for me personally, and probably for a lot of other people, the only reason why I was ever interested in crypto is because it's possible to have a currency, but without having the government keep track of everything, it's supposed to be decentralized. And so having to connect to one of these centralized exchanges just kind of defeats the entire purpose. And you can earn BAT without signing up for one of these services, but you don't actually get to keep any of it. So the only way you can use it is by spending it on other creators. So automatically, if you go to maybe my YouTube page, I'm signed up with Brave Rewards. But if you don't change the settings, then I think it will automatically send me a little bit every time you watch my videos, something like that, and any other creators that are signed up for Brave Rewards. 
So you can still tip those creators, but of course those creators can't withdraw any of their bat without signing up for an Uphold or Gemini account. And it's just a little bit ironic that Brave, this browser that cares so much about privacy, they require you to upload your government ID in order to actually withdraw any of the funds that you get. It would be nice if you could just withdraw the bat that you get to any wallet that you want, but at least for right now, that is not a possibility. And Brave has been talking for years about trying to get this decentralized. They said in a perfect world, they would like to do away with these third-party exchanges and have everything decentralized. But they first started talking about this a couple of years ago, and since then, absolutely nothing has changed. Their latest bat update provided absolutely no update, and they still said it's something that we're working on in the future, and we'd like to do it, but we just can't right now. I get that it's probably a technical or legal problem in order to actually do that, but it is something that I really would like Brave to do in the future. And that was one of the biggest things that rubbed me the wrong way. And besides all of this, Brave Rewards has always been notoriously buggy. And if you think that you're going to get crypto rich just by browsing the web using Brave, it's probably not going to happen. Because anytime you hear Brave mentioned online, you will always hear all of these stories about how people didn't get the bat that they earned, how it just magically disappeared, or how they only earned like 5 cents over a month. Because unless you live in a very specific location, and I guess you're a little bit lucky, you probably won't be making that much. So over two years, I only ended up accumulating like maybe 20 or $30 US dollars out of this whole thing. I never even withdrew it because I didn't even see the point. And another issue is just that for a lot of countries, it just isn't supported. So if you're not in one of the privileged countries that has Uphold or Gemini available, then you just won't be able to get any cryptocurrency or at least withdraw it for yourself. And previously, for some countries where Uphold or Gemini wasn't available, they would save it for you. They would call it Virtual Bat. And so maybe you had used Brave for years and accumulated a whole bunch of Brave Bucks. But they recently changed the system of how they handle everything. And so if you were never able to withdraw it in time, then all of the Bat that you had accumulated over the years is just gone now. So this whole system has just had a whole bunch of problems over the years. And so I'm sure that a lot of people got something out of this Brave Rewards program, but for a lot of people, including me, it was just a big waste of time, basically just a gimmick. So personally, I realized that this Brave Rewards program was not all that uh, about a year ago, and so I basically just stopped using it for that, and I didn't care anymore. Because even without the Brave Rewards, even if you care nothing about the cryptocurrency, Brave is still a good browser because, like I said, it's very private, out of the box. It's got a very good default out-of-the-box experience compared to a lot of other web browsers. So even if you don't really care about all of this, then Brave should still be a good browser, right? So that brings me to a few other complaints that I had about Brave over the years that I used it. So of course, I told you about the ad and tracker blocking. So if you go to some random website right here, they will have a little Brave Shields icon right here. And this is basically their ad and tracker blocker. So if I click this, it says shields are up and I can view any of the trackers and ads that I blocked here. But a lot of times the ad blocker just did not work. So multiple, multiple times, I would just start seeing ads on some random websites, usually a big website like YouTube. So using YouTube, it would block the ads for a few months. And then out of the blue, I would just start seeing ads on the website again. I would see video ads, ads on the homepage, and there wasn't any easy way to fix this. Basically, what I had to do every time this happened is just wait for the next update. So the next time Brave updated, it usually would fix the issue, not always. But just know that when you use Brave, it's not always going to block the ads as you would expect it to. And if their ad blocker doesn't even work that well, I don't know how much I would trust his tracker blocker either. That probably has a bunch of holes in it too. And very often, the shields or their ad and tracker blocker, very often this will break a lot of websites. So a lot of times whenever you want to log into some website, it will just not work properly as you would expect because of this. And so I would constantly have to just turn this off or tweak around with the advanced controls a lot in order to actually make it work. And I would just have some weird issues with some websites that I just don't have on any other browser. So on a lot of websites, especially those that you have to log into, you would just have to completely turn this off. And so that kind of makes part of the browser just useless. And compared to another ad and tracker blocker, like uBlock Origin, you probably know this as one of the most popular ad and tracker blockers out there. 
It is a browser extension for both Chromium and Firefox. And I will just tell you that this works so much better than Brave's blocker. I never ran into the same issues that I did with Brave as with using uBlock Origin. And of course, since Brave is a Chromium based browser, you can actually install uBlock Origin, at least for now. But if you also install uBlock Origin here, it kind of just defeats the entire purpose of having a built in ad block. So I don't really see the point in doing that. And so just having Brave Shields not always work correctly was just one of my biggest annoyances with the whole thing. And Brave is actually quite bloated with a whole bunch of features that I would never use in a million years. And so previously I've complained about all of Firefox's useless features that are annoying. And so now it's my turn to complain about Brave as well. But a lot of the annoying features are their homepage. So they have Brave News down here. I know it's opt-in, but I don't want to sign up for this. So I would prefer it just not be here by default. Let me click no thanks. And then on their new tab page, they have a bunch of ads here. Like for example, they want me to sign up for Brave Talk or use their private video call service. I don't want to use this. I've never wanted to use this. So I have to go down here, customize, go to cards, turn this off, maybe just turn off this entire thing. And also on your homepage, you will also see a lot of ads. Even if you don't opt into Brave Rewards, they will just send you some ads by default. And so you have to uncheck show sponsored images here if you don't want to see that. Otherwise, you will be forced to see ads on your homepage, which is pretty annoying. So let's turn that off. They also have a built in torrent client. I have no idea why a web browser would need a torrent client, but it does have that. So if you don't want to use their torrent client, you can just uncheck this right here. Also, whenever you first start up Brave, it does ask you to opt into the analytics. So let me just skip through this, but it is asking me to enable analytics. So that is nice that they're actually asking me instead of just turning it on by default. But just unchecking this does not remove all of the analytics. If you go to settings and I forget where it even is, but I have to type in something like ping and then I have to uncheck this daily usage ping to Brave. So that's one more analytics that I have to turn off. Just a small thing. It's not even that invasive, but it's just one more annoyance that I have with Brave. Another useless feature they have is the Tor private windows. So instead of just opening up a new private window, you can open up a new private window with Tor. And this might sound pretty cool, like, wow, I get all the privacy protections of Tor. Now I'm going to be more anonymous than ever on the internet. But let's not pretend that this is any suitable replacement for actually using the real Tor browser because they even say it right here. I don't know if you can see this, but let me move this here. If your personal safety depends on remaining anonymous, use the Tor browser instead. If you go to Tor's website, they will tell you don't use Brave, just use the real Tor because the Tor browser implements a lot more privacy protections than this Brave version of it does. This is like when you want to download Tor, but your mom says you have Tor at home already. And I guess the only use for this would be you can browse onion websites on here so you can LARP like you're some dark web hacker. Like watch this, I'm going to go to one of the most dangerous websites on the dark web. Let me hit enter. Whoa guys, I'm on the dark web like a real hacker. Uh oh. So I guess that can be pretty cool if you want to pretend to be like the guy from Mr. Robot. But I would really not recommend this. There was even a bug a couple of years ago with their Tor window where it would leak your IP address and the onion sites that you visit to your ISP, which completely defeats the purpose of even using Tor if you're not going to be anonymous at all. So I just think that this whole thing is just a waste. Let me close this out. Talking about useless features, they also have a wallet here, a crypto wallet that you can put in your browser because that seems like a great idea, I guess. But you might be thinking that this is the wallet where your bat or your Brave Rewards are stored. It isn't. This is just a new wallet that you can create and put all of your crypto assets in here. I don't know why you would keep them in your browser, but you can do that if you want to. But like almost everything else in the Brave browser, at least to me, it is another completely useless feature. And so these are just some of the annoyances that I found over the years of using Brave. And none of them individually is a big deal. Like I can live with having a wallet in my browser. It's really not that big of a deal, but it's just all of these small little annoyances that really just add up to not having the best experience using Brave. So all of these nuisances finally added up and that's why I switched away from using Brave. 
Now, of course, I still do recommend Brave for most normal people. If you don't want to spend a while configuring your browser, then I would still use Brave. You're not really going to go too wrong using Brave. But at least for me, I use a hardened version of Firefox. If you don't know what that means, I have a whole nother video explaining it. But basically, you take Firefox and you add a whole bunch of little tweaks to actually make the browser better. And so that's what I actually use full time now instead of Brave. This Firefox I have right here. And I've done a whole bunch of videos on Firefox. If you want to learn more, I would encourage you to if this sounds interesting. Because I've said that Brave is probably the best out of the box browser experience for normal people. But most of the people that watch this channel are not normal people. We're all a little bit special in our own way. And so if you have the time and ability to tweak your browser a little bit, it's really not that hard. All you have to do is open up one file on your computer and add a little bit of code to that. But that's why I recommend Firefox over Brave, at least for more technical users, because it is much more configurable and customizable. But that's just my opinion on Brave. If you have another opinion, feel free to share it in the comments and enjoy the 0.1 bat that was just deposited in your account.